Russia seems to be pulling out all the stops to make sure its military is still in the fight. Just how extreme are they going? Well, leaked calls from Insight and Ukraine and Russia have some insight into just what's going on in some of these rural Russian, Russian villages where the press don't even bother to look. Let's get into it. Okay, as always, guys, Insight from Ukraine and Russia is an awesome channel. Um, and like a lot of Ukraine war content creators, uh, he's had certainly a time of uh, making sure he can stay monetized. So be sure, guys, to check out his channel. I link it in the description. You definitely want to subscribe and you definitely want to join his uh, membership so you can support what he does. Um, because, again, the advertisers don't love uh, this Ukraine war content lately. Uh, Patreon actually gave me the boot recently, and YouTube is demonetizing videos right and left. So we need all the support from you guys that we can get. There is no full mobilization in Russia right now. Intercepted phone calls prove that some people are still being mobilized. Just listen to what happens in Russian Rostov region right now. Okay, so here's the thing that I want to point out with mobilization. It's one of those contradictions in Russia. Uh, Putin came out after the Wagner coup attempt and said that, oh, Russia has never been more unified. We've never been more supportive of this war. The public, the armed forces, the security services are all behind this war. If that were true, then why is Russia refusing to enact a mobilization? Why are they not having a universal draft and sending conscripts to the fight? The answer is it, it, most analysts agree that Putin realizes that if he were to do so, the Russian public would uh, turn against him. So it says that somehow... They're accessing some sort of real data, and they have the belief that doing so, expanding this war, bringing the war home, so to speak, to the majority of Russians would simply be unacceptably um, an unacceptable boundary crossing for uh, uh, Russia and would endanger Putin's regime more so than it already is. <laughs> This is really interesting uh, that they have drained an entire village. Now, here's there's a lot of problems with this. Um, so this has been a problem actually in many large scale wars. In the First World War, uh, many villages would or towns in say the UK would have drafts in which a draft board would come and they would encourage members to shine, sign up. And in fact, they offered many young men an opportunity to serve in units with their friends. So them and their friends would sign up to the same regiment. Seems like a good idea, right? Bunch of schoolhood boys all serving together as young soldiers. Soldiers. The problem was that too often villages, those units would be sent on missions where they would take high casualty rates and the result would be the near annihilation of an entire generation from, say, a school. And those sort of mass casualty events would dramatically impact the support for the war. And they found that it was easier to disperse the risk across units and discourage these sort of um activities, right? Discourage this sort of universal um, or, or geographically aligned service. Here's where things get even more interesting. Two generations later in the Vietnam War uh, or after the Vietnam War, the U.S. realized that the opposite became true. The U.S. was really good at doing what Russia is doing now, which was targeting um, marginalized people, those who were very poor, those who didn't have strong political connections or social or even like high status in their towns or villages or cities, um, of course, ethnic uh, minorities. And by doing that, it meant that the war remained in many cases um, further removed from the population's mind. The average American, right, looked at Vietnam as something that in many ways was going on over there. And uh, again, that was not an accident, right? Remember, they carved out exceptions for college students, for fathers, right? For all sorts of individuals who may um, have otherwise caused a lot of outrage, right? Uh, at the end of the day, the public is going to be more upset when a family is left without their breadwinner than when a uh, random 
you know, person who wasn't in college, maybe came from a rough background, has been KIA in a, a faraway place like Vietnam. So the to counteract that, the government do running a pro, uh, something similar to that, the uh, Goldwater Act actually mandated that the U.S. was required to deploy a certain percentage of National Guard and Reserve units in any combat operation where active duty units were involved. And the reason was to prevent the public from simply being able to wash their hands of the reality of combat. If they were going to, uh, if the, the, the Congress was going to send American troops, right, they weren't just going to be deployed from bases in, in isolated parts of the country, as active duty often is, but instead it would involve units being drawn by statutory requirement from every National Guard unit, every state, so to speak, uh, could have their uh, sons and daughters sent overseas. And this made sure this was sort of a political litmus test of the war. In the U.S., we want those wars to feel like um, – to feel real and proximate. Uh, it's not a bug. It's a feature. And that way it ensures that these wars that are that we're sacrificing for uh, are are valid, at least pass a public litmus test, um, even when the reality comes home. Uh, Russia is trying to avoid creating this situation, again, by not creating a full mobilization. Um, and apparently, though, they are still trying to target many of these rural villages where there's limited economic opportunity. And more importantly, where no one has strong political or social connections to like the media establishment or an important uh, political figure. And that ensures that when things like this happen, i.e. an entire village of men being drafted and sent to the front, there's no one to outraged. Московская область, вот так сидит поле в палатке. Человек 40. Из 40 человек 15, это одна деревня. Соседняя деревня, они друг друга знают, как родня. Кто-то там дядька, кто-то брат, кто-то сват, понял. Сидят, так понял. Ну, ну всех выгребли. By the way, they introduced a law in Russia that forbids men to legally drive a vehicle in case he was mobilized but not visiting the enlistment office. This law now wouldn't make any sense if Russia wasn't mobilizing people. Anyway, now let's listen to the wife. Yeah, one thing I wanted to also point out, guys, as we've talked about, if you want to support me and my channel, the best way is definitely going to be on CombatVetNews.com. Uh, there we go. This is my site that I launched uh, when basically Patreon told me that I, I couldn't cover war content anymore. Um, if you want to support me, right, links in the description or right up here. Um, any one of these tiers is going to get you access to uh, the exclusive room on the Discord as well as the members only area. And that's where I do all my analysis of the frontline combat footage, the kind that YouTube won't let me show you. Um, but if you want to support the channel and get access to that essential uh, frontline footage, right, the kind of stuff that you that really cuts through the propaganda and lets us see the reality, go to combatvetnews.com. I have a Russian soldier who really believed that TV during Wagner's attempt to take Bakhmut. Нормально, что это? Наши нормально, там ты что, по всем направлениям показывают, два мираса показывают, что уже сжимают, уже некуда им уже все. Только они не выходили, сейчас их. Сказал это, приложил, что 38 тысяч этих погибло в Артемовске, украинцев. Ну а так вот рассказывают, что все. Here's the irony, is that while this isn't really that true, I think this is almost certainly extreme hyperbole, um, what I do find interesting is that uh, relative to expectations, Russian forces are actually indeed doing quite good right now, which is makes it even weirder when you have to lie in propaganda when the truth is also pretty favorable to Russia. They have slowed what was um, supposed to be a lightning Ukrainian counteroffensive that was meant to shatter Russian defenses. Russian defenses are actually holding up fairly well. Russian units acquitting themselves uh, quite well. And Russia definitely using all of its tools and its toolkits, mines, trenches, close air support. Um, uh, their assault units um, all really have found a, a level of synergy on the defense um, and certainly borrowing a lot of defensive tactics Ukrainians have innovated. But uh, so why then they need to create these fictions is bizarre to me. <laughs> Ирки лаборанты мучат у врачихи нашей. Его сунут, что кверут дверь, а его забрали тогда. Помнишь, 
А это он пришел, это на три дня вот отпускали, помнишь? Ну и все, вот как пришел, и он же, и хуй его кладе, это не идет, и за ним... Yeah, this is also really interesting when they talk about looking out for everyone speaking out. So it is illegal in Russia to criticize the war or the military establishment. Um, and what I find fascinating is that these sort of extensive, deep running uh, surveillance, right? This Russian state doesn't have the people to watch everything. So they rely on people themselves. And so that's what they say they do. They watch everywhere and it's your neighbors. And once you create that level of distrust between neighbors, between society, um, you damage the social fabric, you damage parts of the, the society. Um, and when people no longer trust their immediate community, um, that's when they start to rely only on the state, right? You trust what your mom tells you she's seen and done much more than you trust the national media. But what if you don't trust your, your, your friends that you've known for years anymore? You don't trust your cousins or your neighbors, right? Then who do you trust? The only thing that's left in many cases is a state controlled media and information source. <laughs> Slavik is definitely a smart guy and Russia knows that there are lots of Slavics among mobilized soldiers and that's why... Anyway guys, that is all I had for you for today. Thank you guys as always for joining me and uh, I will see you in the next one.